Hello and welcome back to another video. Today's Wednesday, so this is Waffle on a Wednesday where I answer your questions to the best of my ability. And today I've got Rebecca with me to help me answer some of those questions. Hiya. We've also got little Monty. Monty's doing an impression of Yoda. <laughs> He's just woken up, bless him. Anyway, let's get on with this week's Waffle on a Wednesday. Once again, Rebecca is going to help me by reading out the questions. <laughs> Hi Mel, love your waffle on a Wednesday. Thank you very Could much. you tell me how big a solar panel I will need for my camper van for running a 12 volt fridge and to keep two 115 amp hour batteries charged up? I'm converting a 2009 Movano van and any help would be welcome. Your videos are very helpful. All the best, Graham Gifford. Well, thank you, Graham. That's very kind of you to say. Um, I'm glad my videos are helping you on your camper van building journey. Now, to answer your question, I get this all the time. People quite often ask me what size solar panels they're going to need on their van. And to be truthful with you, all I can say to you is fit as many solar panels on the roof of your van as you possibly can because, well, we don't really get that many sunny days here in the UK. It's always a good idea to use your alternator to charge your laser batteries as well as solar. It's very difficult to rely 100% on solar power to keep your batteries charged up. I hope that kind of answers your question. And good luck with your van build. Yeah. Okay, this is an interesting question from a really? lady called Mary Cotter. She says, hey Mel, wondered if you could show how you have built the door in your bulkhead through to the cab. Notice when looking back at previous videos, you said that you intended on fitting it with a Yale lock and covering it with auto carpet. So it wasn't noticeable from the front that you were living in the back, but didn't post any future videos. Great videos, keep it up. Um, I'm really sorry, Mary, I've got to admit I was going to fit a door in my bulkhead, um, but I put some curtains up temporarily. And they're still here. <laughs> and they're still there. <laughs> so it's... no door has happened. And, uh, yeah, I've, uh, the simple answer to your question is I haven't actually got round to doing it yet. I've literally put some blackout curtains across and uh, yeah. They work really well, I've got to be honest. Yeah, and they, they're quick and easy. Yeah, and they keep the heat out as well. They do actually keep the heat from the cab from coming into the living space. So uh, for that reason, I've not got round to building the door. And the chances are I probably never will build that door because yeah. I'm actually thinking of taking the bulkhead down. Let me just turn the camera around so you can see. I'm actually thinking of taking this bulkhead out and putting a swivel seat in. And the reason for this is after seeing so many lovely vans at this weekend's van festival i've realized that having a swivel seat in the front really does open up your living space yeah gives um, you an area to sit <clears throat> yeah especially greg virgo's van so uh, after seeing greg's van i think i'm probably going to fit a swivel seat in there that is on the back burner and maybe a project for the winter i hope that answers your question and once again i'm really sorry uh i didn't finish it off <laughs> Since adding your awning, have you really used it much or does it depend on where you're parked? That's a really good question. That's a good question actually and I've got to say having an awning on the side of your van is a complete waste of money. Yeah, <laughs> to be quite we frank. haven't hardly used it have we? And I'm so glad I didn't go and spend like a thousand pound fitting a Fiamma awning because I think this year so far we've used that awning twice. <laughs> <laughs> you both did that at the same time. Once at the Van Life Festival, and it was really nice to have that awning up at the Van Life Festival. We we um, parked opposite some of our friends, and we put the awning out across both vans, and that and was really nice. nice yeah. Give us a bit of shade. Yeah. But then the weather turned a bit nasty, a bit gnarly. It got really windy, and it took four of us to get the awning down and rolled up safely. In the wind. In the yeah. wind. Yeah. <laughs> and the other time was down at Little Fishdraw. We had it out one day one day there when it yeah. was really hot yeah. um but that was it really and that was in a car park so it weren't really Allowed. suitable to yeah. put the awning out in a car park but the way yeah. we were parked we were parked up against like a grass bit bank and it was yeah it was all right it was okay but yeah. a little bit naughty putting an awning up in and a we car had park it, you had it um actually onto the side of the van as well so it wasn't on yeah, the yeah, yeah 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 it was it was fixed for the side of the van so it was okay but yeah a yeah. little bit little bit iffy just the, yeah in, in fish wall. But now I would say if you're unless unless you're building your camper van to go and stay in campsites. Yeah, it's ideal. It's ideal then you you'll be you'll you'll get lots of use out of your awning if mm. you're staying in a campsite. But if you're like me and um, Becky, you don't want to use a campsite, you just want a wild camp or just do just a bit of stealth camping. Yeah. 
yeah, having an awning out isn't very stealthy. No. <laughs> And also, and you don't have the space most of the time because you're parked up in a lay-by or in an yeah, industrial estate. You're not going to put an awning out. It's not okay to do so, that. No. no. That answer that question. Yeah, we've used it twice this year, and uh, we probably won't get a chance to use it again this year unless we do no. any more festivals. We've got a metal detecting rally coming up. Oh yeah, with the end of the mate month. Dave. Yeah. Um, if that the weather's should be good. okay, we can put it up and, then. Yeah, as long as it's not windy, we'll put the awning up then. Yeah. But in terms of being a necessary for the van, it's no. entirely up to whether you're going to be using campsites or not. Because yeah. if you're not, don't waste your and money. And if you want to register your van with a DVLA as a camper van, because it is part of their stipulations, you have an awning on your van. <laughs> yeah, along with the other requirements. Yeah. But we won't go into that because that's a bit of a bugbear, isn't it? <laughs> but anyway, I do hope that answers your question. Having an awning on the side of your van is really down to personal preference and what you're going to be using your van for. This is another great question from a lady called Susan Woods. Hi, Susan. She says, great vid as usual. Thank you, Susan. <laughs> Two questions, if I may. One, are those stickers behind you or are they tiles? They're tiles. These are actually floor tiles. They look like little tiny tiles, but in fact they are like one foot square. I They're big for I square. I kind of cheated. They are actually floor tiles Yeah. Um, for the wood burner. And the second question is... Where did you get the tiles? <laughs> Where did I get the tiles? They're from um, Wix's. <laughs> on, carry on. The second question is, I thought Greg was on holiday. Was the clip of you two pre-recorded? No, Greg was actually at the Van Life Festival and uh, yeah, it was purely a chance meeting. We were about literally about to leave the festival and as we drove as we were driving out of the festival we bumped into Greg. We had a little bit of a chat and uh, You just suddenly thought you'd yeah, get him I, on I your I said to him, Come on Greg, come in the van, do a bit of a waffle on a Wednesday with me. Yeah. To be honest, he didn't have much choice. <laughs> yeah, but he was super super but chuffed. What a gentleman and what a privilege to actually meet Greg Virgo at last. Yeah. And he was an absolute gentleman as well. It was really fun and if you're watching this video, Greg, thank you for joining me on that day. Really appreciate it yeah and it worked really well because it was just spur of the moment wasn't it yeah you it was it was completely off the, the cuff literally oh uh, yeah off the cuff it was like greg come here <laughs> i want to make a video with you yeah and he did really well because he was literally yeah. just straight off yeah it put him on the spot a bit <laughs> um so yeah cheers greg <laughs> thanks for the great question is it susan susan yeah susan woods thank you susan and now it's the time you've all been waiting for, and that is this week's Troll of the Week. Roll that intro. Troll of the Week. What is the point of having a camera inside your van? If you're 10 miles away, all it does is tell you that you've been broken into and ruins the rest of your day. It does nothing to stop it or prevent it. <laughs> What a ridiculous thing to say. Of course it's going to ruin your day. Whether you know about it sooner or later, you're not going to be overjoyed, are you? You're not going to come back to your van and go, oh, whoopee, my van's been broken into. What a fantastic day. What a ridiculous thing to say. And, and imagine if your van got broken into and you knew nothing about it, it's and then worse. other people come and help themselves to your van. If there's a window broken, of yeah. course you want to know about it. If you're, if you're 10 miles away from your van, but why would you be 10 miles away from your van? That's the whole point of having a camper van. You take it with you wherever you go. Yeah. You're not going to be 10 miles away from it. What a ridiculous thing to say. And it does prevent crime as well. Yeah. If my van is parked next to your van and I've got CCTV cameras all around it and some crooks come come around looking for to steal stuff, whose van do you think they're going to break into? It's not going to be mine, I can tell you that. The chances are it's going to be your van they break into because my van is covered by CCTV. Therefore, it does actually work as a preventive tool as well as. Yeah. Obviously, it's not going to stop all the thieves from breaking into your van, but if they do, at least you've got video footage to show your insurance company, and then that way they know you're not trying to pull a fast one. Now, talking about van security, we've got a great question by Bythonic Man saying, can you obtain location history on your tracker? Oh yeah, so for those of you that don't know, I've actually got a tracker fitted to my van and it's made by a company called LeisureWise. It's a really cheap tracker, but it's really efficient and works extremely well. And to answer that question, yes, that tracker does come with an app and it does store your location history. And it works surprisingly well and really accurate as well. I highly recommend that tracker and if you haven't seen the video of when I fitted the tracker to my van, I'll put a link to it up here. <laughs> 
Next question is by Camper Black Magic, and he asks, Hi Mel, I have a quick question, maybe for Waffle on a Wednesday. I've just been watching your video on fitting a sun visor on your van. Does it need to be fitted at a certain angle, as I have fitted one on my boxer, and when it gets to speeds above 55 miles per hour, it starts to vibrate and I'm worried it might snap off. That's not good. I have managed to get the DVLA to re-register it as a motor caravan. Well I would, done. I would love to take it up to the maximum 70 on the motorways. Okay, first of all, if I was you, I'd take that sun visor off as soon as you can, <laughs> by the sounds of it, it's very dangerous. And yeah. if it is vibrating, yeah. the chances are sooner or later it, it is gonna snap, snap off, off yeah. and it could cause a really serious accident. And you really don't want that on your conscience, so get that sun visor off of your van as soon as possible. There's definitely something not right with it. Yeah, I hope that answers that question. Stay safe. Let's have some metal detecting questions, shall we? Okay. Hi Mel, what's been your best or most valuable metal detecting find? Thanks, Tim. Well, Tim, to answer that question, in short, gold. Gold is the best thing I've ever found. Well, metal detecting is my favourite metal. <laughs> But most, it is jewellery though, isn't it? It's not, yeah, jewellery yeah. and coins. When people go to the beach, they lose their change out of their pockets. And uh, I collect that change and put it in the parking meter. So like I said earlier, metal detecting really does pay. And talking about metal detectors, we've got the next question by Hornet Fronty. And he says, this looks great fun, Mel. As a newbie and a tight ass, <laughs> could you recommend a chief half-decent de half starter detector? Cheers. Um, if you're looking for a cheap metal detector, I'd say go on eBay and look for a second-hand one. If you know, if you really are that much um, of a, <laughs> of a tight ass. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, eBay. Just look on eBay. Try and stick to well-known brands like Mine Lab or Garrett. If you buy one of those, then the chances are, if you don't like the hobby, you can resell that detector yeah, and, and get most of your great. money back because yeah. they do hold their money. What about Dr. Otak as well? Dr. Otek. Oh yeah, yeah. A friend of mine, Chris from Hades Detecting, has just done a series of videos on a really budget metal detector, and he's had quite a lot of success with that. So I'll put a link to Chris's videos or his YouTube channel up here if I can. Yeah, check out Hades Detecting. He has just done a series of videos all about a budget metal detector. Yeah, so you might find that really helpful. You may find that really helpful. Thanks for the great question and happy swinging. <laughs> Now, if you've got any similar questions for me, then I invite you to leave those questions down in the comments section of this video, and I'll do my best to answer your questions next week. And again, if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up, and if you are new to my channel, then please do consider subscribing, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Ta-da for now. Bye, everyone.